Good day, training students. Welcome to the second installment of Bamboo Tel Escuela in English 9. I am Rexy Sherto, your radio teacher for the day. This episode is streamed through television, Facebook, and other online modes of learning. You can also tune in with us via radio at 88.5 DWNDFM. So, what are you waiting for? Grab your module, pen, and make sure that you are in a comfortable place while listening audibly to this broadcast. If you are ready, let's start. Before we move on to today's lesson, let's have a quick recap on our lesson last week. Do you still remember our lessons? Correct! We learned about models and models of permission. Now, do you still remember the types of models of permission? Correct again! The models of permissions are may, can, and could. So let's take this one by one. The model may is used to ask permissions in formal conversations, as in the sentences, Ma'am, may I go to the toilet? And, Mr. President, may I ask a question? Now, the model can is used in informal conversations, as in the sentence, Can I take your car? Wherein the speaker is asking casually his best friend for his car. Now, the model could is used to ask permissions politely. This is more polite than can and is used interchangeably with may. As in the sentence, ma'am, could I go to the toilet? Very good. Now let's move on to our next lesson. Objectives. 1. In this lesson, you are expected to define models of obligation. Second one, you are also expected to use models of obligation in sentences correctly. And third, you are to respond to given obligations responsibly. Every day, we are bombarded by many obligations that is intended to make our lives better and safer, especially this time of pandemic. We all have an obligation to perform in order to help stop the pandemic. These obligations may be personal, like exercising, having a good rest, and studying at home. It may also come from outside authority, like the police, the government, and health workers, such as wearing a mask, staying at home, and observing social distancing. Now, we are going to learn how to respond to these obligations with accordance to the models being used in expressing them. As you may have learned last time, models are words used to express permission, obligation, and prohibition. Models like must, should, and have to are used to express obligation or a call to action. But how does these three models differ from each other? First, let us infer on the use of the model word must using these examples. Example number one, you must do your homework this evening. And you must stay in your houses during quarantine. Do you have any idea? You were right. Must is used when the authority or the obligation comes from the person who is speaking. In sentence number one, you must do your homework this evening. The teacher, as the speaker, has an authority obliging his student to do their homework. In sentence number two, you must stay in your houses during quarantine, the mayor or the speaker is obliging his constituent to stay at home during quarantine. Were you able to grasp the use of the model verb must? 
Then let's try another example. I must exercise regularly. In this example, we can see that the speaker is giving obligation to himself to exercise regularly. Must, like other modal verbs, helps give meaning to other verbs. And let's look at all its meaning so we can avoid misunderstanding. Meaning number one. We use must when we want to say that it is necessary or is very important that something happens in the present or future. For example, I must work hard on my English. Note, this expresses an obligation that you place on yourself. Here are other examples. You must not tell this to anyone. It is a secret. This food must not be eaten. It has gone bad. Pupils must not run in the corridors. Note, here, must expresses a school rule. Now let's move on to meaning number two. We use must to give emphasis to an opinion. Example number one. I must admit, it was a frightening experience. We use the phrase, I must admit, before a surprising or negative comment. Example number two. I must say, this food is delicious. In this sentence, we would say, I must admit, this food is delicious because it would mean that we did not expect the food to be delicious. But this would mean or sound a little rude. Example number three. I must admit, I didn't like much when I first met him. Number four, I must say, you look really well. Have you been on holiday? As you can see in the following examples, the speaker expresses his own opinion. Now let's move on to meaning number three. We use must to emphasize that we think it is a good idea for someone to do something pleasant. It is a way of giving a recommendation. For example, number one, you must come and visit us while you're in the Philippines. In here, a friend is suggesting or recommending his friend to pay a visit. Example number two, we must go and see the film. I have heard it is excellent. Meaning number four, we use must to make an assumption or to reach a logical conclusion about something that is very likely to be true. For example, you must be so tired after running that marathon. In this sentence, the speaker assumes that the person running the marathon is so tired. Example number two, my bicycle has disappeared. Someone must have stolen it. In this sentence, the speaker assumed that someone has stolen his bicycle because it is missing. Example number three. You must have been so cold when you were locked out on the house in the snow. This means the speaker assumes that you were so cold. Note, in meaning number four, the opposite of must is can't. Remember, the model must is used when the speaker is the authority that gives the obligation. Next, let us infer on the use of the model verb have to using these examples. Example number one, you have to pay your taxes right. Example number two, I have to pay a visit to my mother. Do you have any idea? You were right. Have to is used to express duty based on work, family, rules, law, and other factors. In sentence number one, you have to pay your taxes right, the duty or obligation comes from rules and laws. While in sentence number two, I have to pay a visit to my mother, the obligation comes from our duty to family. Did you understand when to use the model verb have to? 
Then, let's take another example. You have to wear a helmet when riding a motorcycle. In this sentence, the obligation to wear a helmet is backed up by rules and law of traffic, making it compulsory to obey. Had to is used to express obligations based on rules and laws. Let us infer at the use of the model should using these examples. You should save money for the future. You should study hard so you can pass the exams. Any idea? You were right. Should is used for mild and weak obligations. It can be used for giving advice. In the examples, the obligation to save money and study hard seems like an advice that a person have an option to follow or not. Were you able to understand when to use the model verb should? Let's take a look at these other examples to deepen your understanding. You should do your best in your studies. In this sentence, the obligation to do your best in your studies is an advice. Should has a strange spelling, but a simple pronunciation. It rhymes with good. Should, good. At this juncture, we are going to learn five meanings or uses of should. Meaning number one, we use should when we want to say or ask what is the correct or best thing to do. For example, you should drive more slowly in the freezing weather. In the sentence, the speaker is suggesting or saying that the best thing to do is to drive slowly during freezing weather. Another example. Do you think I should invite them to my party? Yes, I think you should. In this example, we see a conversation using the model verb should, wherein in sentence 1, the speaker is asking the best thing to do, while in sentence number 2, the one he's talking to is suggesting what he thinks is the best. Let's take a look at another example. Should I have closed the door after I left? Yes, you should. Note, there are two other possible short answers here. One is, yes, you should have. And another is, yes, you should have done. The second one is very informal. Meaning number two. We sometimes use should after I when we are giving advice. We also use would in the same manner. Example, I shouldn't be concerned. It's not a serious problem. In the sentence, the speaker advised the person not to be concerned. Example number two. If I were you, I should study English harder. We can also use would, but should sounds both a little stronger and is slightly more formal. Meaning number three. We sometimes use should after why when we are asking the reason for something. For example, why should anyone want to be so cruel to an animal? Why shouldn't they go on holiday if they want to do so? Now let's move on to meaning number four. We use should to express expectation or to say that something will probably happen. For example, my father should be here by now. He usually arrives at this time. Another example, you should find the restaurant very easily with this map. In these two examples, the speakers are expressing their expectation. Next example, can you please finish this work by the end of the day? Yes, that shouldn't be a problem. Now let's move on to meaning number five. We use should after if or the phrase in case 
In formal English, when we refer to an event that is possible in the future. For example, if you should require any further information, please don't hesitate to contact me. The less formal version of the phrase, if you should require any further information, is if you require any more information. Another example is, in case you need any further assistance, I would be happy to help you. The less formal version is, if you need any more help, I would be happy to help you. Example number three. She took a map in case she should get lost. The less formal version of this sentence is, she took a map in case she got lost. So there you have it. Those are the three models of obligation. The model mass is used when the speaker is the authority giving the obligation, while the model had to is used when the obligation is based on rules and laws, while the model should is used to give advice or weak obligation that a person may or may not follow. Well done everyone! Now, let's have a quick rundown of today's lesson. Today, we have learned to use three models of obligation. Must, have to, and should. Must is used when the authority for the obligation comes from the person who is speaking. Have to is used to indicate duty based on work, family, rules, law, and other factors, while should is used for mild and weak obligations. It can be used for giving advice. Great! Now, get ready for today's quiz. Get a pen, a piece of paper, and answer this activity. Fill in the blanks of the correct models of obligation. Write must, have to, or should. Here is your first sentence. You, blank, wear sunglasses when looking at the sun during eclipse. What do you think is the correct answer? You are right. The answer is should because you are not obliged to wear sunglasses, although it is advisable. Well done! Here is your next sentence. The teacher, you, blank, answer the activities in your module before we retrieve it. What could be the answer? Good job! The answer is must because the speaker or the teacher obliges the student to accomplish their modules. You're doing great! On to the next sentence. You, blank, stay inside your home during curfew hours. Let's check. The answer is have to, because the obligation is bound by rules and law. How about this next sentence? Children blank obey their parents. What is your answer? You're right again. The answer is must because the speaker obliged children to pay respect to their parents. You're doing great. Let's move on to the fifth sentence. Parents Blank respect their children too. Must, have to, should, what do you think? Well done! The answer is should because the speaker is giving advice to parents to respect their children too. Let's move on to the next sentence. Parents, blank, send their children to school. What do you think is the answer? Good job! 
The answer is have to. Parents are obliged by law to provide for their children's education. Excellent work, guys! Let us always remember to be responsible in performing our obligations, whether great or small. Bear in mind what you have learned today. There are three modal verbs of obligation, must, have to, and should. Must is used when the authority for the obligation comes from the person who is speaking. Have to is used to indicate duty based on work, family, rules, law, and other factors. Should is used for mild and weak obligations. It can be used for giving advice. Thank you for staying with us. Tune in again next week at DWNDFM or live via Facebook for another lesson in English 9. Once again, this is Rex Sherto, your radio teacher for today, wishing you good health and God bless.